Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the RHAP BNB for week nine of Survivor 47. My name is Mike Bloom, and after a bit of Saul searching, I am in consolation mode as we are here to memorialize one of the more popular characters of the season so far. Of course, I am not alone in an episode, or at least half of it, that was all about partnerships. I am thrilled to be joined by my forever partner on the BNB, Liana Boris. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I'm also very solid. It's just been a tough, a tough week with this. You know, Saul really jumped up and I think became a fan favorite. And look, I don't want to spoil anything for the game that we're going to play today, but the casuals also really loved him. So it is a bit sad to, to have him ultimately get voted out here. But yeah, what an episode with a lot of challenges, a lot of scrambling and a lot to talk about. Well, we're going to get into his down Saul, uh, definitely, but I'm very excited to welcome this guy in, as we always do. And I don't know, Liana, you've been uh, looking into these internet streets for what the casuals are thinking, but this guy is one of the most tuned in to what's going on on Survivor on the internet, considering he's putting out content week after week, uh, more hardworking than people standing on pegs, uh, grunting it out, as Jeff Probst says that they can all be secretive peridium, but then also calling out how they're doing at the challenges. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I was going to say, Saul good, man. It's all good. You know, Saul's <laughs> gone. We're going with the Saul puns. He said it on the episode. I was like, I he said, it's all good. I he said the thing. He said the name. Um, Yeah, no, happy to be here. Of course, of course. It wouldn't be a season of Survivor if I can't talk, if I can't check into the BNB. So Yay. here we are, week nine. Uh, feels like finally, I say in one respect, we're getting our feet out under us. Maybe one foot, because again, we do have a little bit of something to derail the format in the first half of this episode as we go to what seems to be the now seasonal break into groups and then compete as individuals challenge uh, with the extra twist thrown in, as we saw in 45, of okay, 40% of the group is going to lose their vote, and then 75% of those people are going to earn their vote back. But it ends up culminating in what I thought was such a fun second half of the episode, even if it is much ado about nothing. I hope people realize when they look back on this season and they look at the voting chart, don't just remember this as like an open and shut unanimous vote against Saul. There was a lot of enjoyment and havoc to be had in the second half of this episode. Priyam, give me your thoughts about sort of the tale of two stories we got in this particular installment and your thoughts about Survivor 47 up to this point. Yeah, um, I agree with you there with the eight to one vote. It was very jarring. I watched and I was like, wait, what? Wait, what, what did I? I felt like I kind of missed something. I was like, yeah. they just dogpiled. But I also think that there was it's more like it's not about the, the end. It's about the journey, not the destination a little bit. Well, it was about a journey. There was one in this episode. <laughs> and we got the journey, of course, classic, classic, modern, new era survivor. Um, but no, I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed the episode for the most part. I think that the second half was very much different than the first half where you split the middle with the challenge, which was like good 10, 15 minutes or so. It's pretty long. Um, but they've done this pretty much every new hour season at this point. And I was remarking on how I thought the second half was very interesting because I love I like the tribal council. Actually, I usually find myself more in tune with the camp life stuff and the strategy there. And then we go to tribal and it's like, all right, here we go. And it's a little more routine. It's a little like everybody just keeps their carts themselves. And but this time I was loving it because there was so much of like this little it was like the quietest live tribal in a in a minute. They were so polite. They all stayed in their seats basically until Jeff gave them permission. Right. Jeff was remarking about it. You know, Tini was like, could you just repeat the question, please? I'm sorry. And uh, they were talking. Jeff was like asking them questions about how they're whispering to each other. And I counted there was like 15 different interactions before it mm. actually became live which I feel like has to be a record for the amount of times that people just did, didn't get. I'm like, when are, somebody's got to get up. I would almost like hoping that they didn't get up because I was like, this is going to be the quietest live tribal ever where they're all just panicking silently in their seats. <laughs> just like, what's going on? And I'm like, there's so many. I don't even know. I, I'm having trouble following who is lost where because I was like, the votes seem to line up well with each faction. They should have the votes from their perspective and they're all confused. And then all of a sudden it became eight to one and, now I'm confused. Um, and overall, I've been enjoying this season a lot. I think that's been the common sentiment online. I agree with that. Usually not too uncommon, but I like it. I think it's pretty good. We've had a great cast. Uh, every episode has been good. I really don't think there's been any like 
eh, episodes, questionable mm. ones. I will agree with Liana last week. I think it was last week. Auction, why do we not? Why do we gamify the auction? It doesn't need to be gamified. I will say that's one of my biggest criticisms of this season, but it also applies to 45. That was two seasons ago. So right. it's nothing particularly unique. And honestly, I don't think it's going to change much. It's a small thing to complain about in the big picture. And I think overall, I've liked 47 quite a lot. So I think I'm hoping I'm hoping that we continue this trend because I feel like 45, 46, 47 has been a great trio of back to back to back. And I'm yeah. worried that like 48 won't now, but we'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, look, if it doesn't end up being bad, that's OK. We have each other. We can all talk about it. Right. <laughs> so let's create a community of solace just on the off. Ah, chance. solace. <laughs> I know you're welcome. So, uh, look, I would say for me, this episode was interesting because on one hand, uh, there was the excitement of, oh my God, who's actually going to go mm -hmm. and all of the scramble. And, you know, it's like, oh, well, I thought we were going to do Kyle. We're not doing Sue. And then that really seemingly teeny suggestion of wanting to do Kyle that seemed to be the tipping point where everything just seemingly exploded after that, because now there were no longer two sides. Now there were sort of three things that people were trying to decide between, which I think really created a ton of chaos, at least in, that's the narrative that we saw in the scramble. And then also continuing seemingly into the quietest live tribal council. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the thing was like, it didn't even seem like there was so much up in the air as people being like, I don't know what to decide. It was just more so confusion of, okay, wait, so this is the plan, right? Like that seemed to be more of the 15 or so check-ins that Purdy was talking yeah. about was just people whispering at each other being like, yeah, okay, we're voting this person, right? It wasn't necessarily, I don't know what my options are. Again, it seemed like the vote was pretty locked in that it was basically going to be like the two goos plus Rachel and Andy. And mm -hmm. then my Occam's razor, and maybe we'll find this out at the beginning of next episode or through Exit Press or whatever was like, yeah, everyone pretty much got that once Rachel and Andy weren't budging, then like mm -hmm. everyone else decided to jump on board. That's the weird thing about this very unique type of disarray was that it was less about, oh my God, anyone could go. It was more so like, yeah, what did we agree upon? I don't really remember. Can we all try to get on the same page here? Uh, and so especially when you look back in retrospect, it's um, when you see Saul like get up and start whispering, it kind of becomes unfortunately like, the last gasps in a manner of speaking of someone that is drowning that only found out he was drowning about six hours ago. And I mean, I understand why the editors don't want to give it away, but at the same time, I'm now just imagining that tribal council, all the whispering was just like, okay, but we're still doing Saul, right? Or like, yeah no, I'm, I'm doing Saul. Like, that's why I imagine Rachel talking to Sam, for example, where Sam is trying desperately to get the vote to flip. And it's probably just Rachel and, and Andy being like, no, no, like we're doing Sam or something or we're doing Saul, like something like that, where it's actually not that exciting. <laughs> it's just confirmatory mm. because was... you can see Sam like trying to scramble, but like ultimately he even ends up voting out Saul. Was uh did Saul confirm? I know I didn't listen to his exit press, but did he confirm that it was like they just realized that Rachel and Andy? Because I was like, from the perspective of the Lavos, or, or really just Teeny and Saul, they looked like they would have had Genevieve the whole. They felt it seemed like they thought they had Genevieve the whole time, but obviously we knew they didn't. She was pretty much the cat. She was the orchestrator of all this, yeah. all this ruckus, right? It could have <laughs> been a simple, could have been a simple Sam vote, I guess. But Lava was freaking, and they thought they had her. So I'm like, oh, so they knew they had Sam for sure. He's the one who's basically blowing it all up. Mm -hmm. um, and then Rachel really wasn't shown too much. And I was like, well, they think they have Andy, which is an interesting read. But I'm like, why wouldn't they think they have Andy? What have we yeah. gotten that suggests they don't have Andy? Like, why wouldn't they? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what from what Saul told me, he didn't play his shot in the dark because he felt like, if anything, it would be a very tight margin and he didn't want to necessarily get himself voted out. That's Basically, true. he had said that, uh, he had felt that one of the reasons why he didn't play his shot in the dark is because he felt he had Rachel and Andy on his side. Oh, uh, okay. What's interesting is the Genevieve of it all. He's told me, and I think he's told other people as well, that he wasn't like completely surprised, maybe more so in retrospect, that Genevieve voted against him considering that, despite maybe some of the conversations they got over their like shared misery towards Rome, they never mm. really were on the same page from the very beginning when, you know, Saul was part of that movement by Asia to try to get Genevieve voted out. And so maybe they just like made nice. Uh, and so 
I think Saul eventually knew it was coming. I think the larger piece of discussion, which he brings up as well, is like, is this way too early? Uh, and this mm. is, I mean, I guess we had this conversation with the Keyshawn vote as well. So maybe we just think with Genevieve, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for whatever reason, Genevieve is able to get by on like a motorcycle that's taped together with duct tape, despite the fact that anyone else who tries to sit on it, it would instantly fall apart. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Is it too early? I don't know. I don't think, I think she's not re receiving much blowback everybody's in her pocket to some extent and at least as much as you can with 10 people and uh she she even says right after the vote i can't believe that worked <laughs> is, something like that i was like yeah good for her like i mean i think it's good for her i can't tell she, we have the she is the luxury of all of us speculating how is this going to affect her end game where it's like some mm -hmm. players are like are they going to be around next week is kyle going to be voted out finally genevieve is like i'm going to blow things up for some reason because i'm being petty and we're like, oh, okay, is this going to win her the game? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, the when um, Genevieve said, I can't believe that worked, to me, it was juxtaposed with Teeny's reaction. Teeny's oh, sobbing. I love, I love it. It's so oh. sad. And it's great because they're also both, like, they're the two remaining yes. Lavo. Yes. And to see just the absolute alpha and omega, the emotional yes. spectrum be carried across opposite sides of tribal council as well mm -hmm. is so good. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when you think like, oh, that's the Lavo three and then the other two, you know, the two other Lavo members, completely different reactions to, to Saul going home. Wild. It's it, yeah, it's funny to think about. I didn't really think about that. I was like, oh, yeah, they're the only two red players left. Wow. What a from the very beginning, I would never have predicted that. That's where the Lavo tribe was headed with Teeny and she's on the bottom. And then you got you got uh, Genevieve over there calling all the shots, basically looking like a mastermind at this point. It's like, well, interesting. Didn't see this coming. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, I think of the three tribes, I probably would have pegged Lavo as, like, the one to cannibalize themselves first just because, like, mm. there were, that was such an obnoxious mixture of personalities, delightfully so, that, That's like, true. they were going to take each other out. I think we had assumed that the three Lavos would have been tighter than we thought because, like, hell, even last episode, it was presented as, like, well, they're the ones that are making the decisions. And this just came out of nowhere, though it didn't apparently for Genevieve, that she's like, great now i have the opportunity to take out Saul, and it's like what and genevieve she just she mystifies me and i wonder if it's the fact that is genevieve looking for a stallion to tame because she joins up she joins mm -hmm. up with rome right and like rome proves himself to be this agent of chaos and granted there is a certain point where genevieve is either like i don't want to work with him anymore or like I got to cut bait. He's too much of a liability. But like, think about the other people that she has reached out to, to work with exclusively Andy. Mm -hmm. And now in this episode, even like prior to Gabe winning immunity, she's like, I want to work with Gabe. Mm -hmm. I think she feels that she is able to like attach herself to these players of absolute entropy and either ride mm -hmm. them to the end and like hope she gets the votes over them or like essentially abuse and use them uh, and discard mm. them of like all right i'm gonna use them as a shield as long as it takes and like once they prove too unstable then i'm gonna ditch them and so maybe the reason why genevieve decided to hitch her wagon to tuku and decide to dispose of saul is maybe she felt he was too solid in a manner of speaking i did kind of think i kind of was harkening back and this is kind of a wild take for some people but like kind of reminded me a bit of tony vlacos just clipping a number that he didn't need mm. uh early in the merge of like kagian or something where it's like yeah you can get rid of lj we don't need him like we've kind of got numbers on all sides like in her case she's kind of like i got the blue tribe over here but then i've also got these underdogs like teeny what's teeny gonna do you know, or and, uh, Teeny's in my pocket, I guess. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, Teeny goes back and decides to work with Genevieve. I, I could see it happening. Uh, then you've got the Gata tribe who are basically, I mean, what the hell's going on with that tribe? You got Andy, who is all on his own little island, but he's with Genevieve more than almost anybody. Sam, who is, I don't know what he's doing. And Rachel, they're all, like all individuals. So I'm like, Actually, this isn't the worst move ever. On paper, I think people will question it, but I think that this could easily pay off and buy plenty of time. There's certain like extra numbers in any situation where you're like, I don't need Saul. I don't think I need him at this point. Yeah. And he's just a threat. And he, he apparently is just super likable. Everyone likes the guy at fair play. Like we all like him too. So maybe there's something to it. So I'm like, you know what? Why not? And it gave us a really fun like 30 minutes at the end. Let's just keep it going. Like I'd rather that than 
Well, actually, that's not true because it's a final nine. It could have been a close five to four vote. Maybe yeah. it would have been. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were good either way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I so I I sort of have a few different things when I think about Genevieve's decision. So the first is. Okay, obviously you want numbers. And when we think of numbers, we think of those three, the three Lavos as, oh, well, they're the three Lavos. They survived, you know, the whole Lavo debacle altogether. <laughs> they're probably pretty close. But I don't think that that's actually true, right? Even Genevieve says, I've been holding this grudge from Rome getting voted out against Saul. That's part of the reason why she was motivated to get rid of him. And if she's found other people she has stronger connections with, those are her numbers. So she thinks that she has the numbers with them. But to us, it looks weird because we just assumed that those three were together. Because when she first wanted to take out Saul, I was like, what is wrong with you? And then I had to think, <laughs> okay, what I'm being presented versus what the reality probably is looks different. So I think that that's one thing to consider, that she probably still has the numbers without Saul. And the other thing kind of goes to Mike's point earlier about the wild stallionness of it all. I don't know if I think it's that. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> who she thinks she can beat. Because I, in the best case scenario, you go to the final five with any, you could beat any one of those people. So yeah. she's trying to just like sort of assemble that group. And she perceives Saul to be very likable, someone who could take the votes away from her. That's someone who she wants to get rid of and rather roll the dice with other people if she's able to make it to the end with them. What I do think is interesting is, listen, as we found out as recent as last season, prognosticating jury votes is you know as as good as predicting the weather three months out and that like you never know what will happen when we put pen to parchment but it is interesting to already sort of like get a sense as to what's happening i know the internet has certainly been stumping from a certain perspective for like the caroline who is like a, probably one of the most mm. solid players despite the fact that she didn't vote this episode but then like there's a moment, I don't know if, if y'all saw this, where like Caroline says she doesn't have a vote at tribal council and it cuts to Sierra on the jury saying good. good. Oh, I wrote mm -hmm. that down. Like, oop. But <laughs> oh, what I, no. what I, I want to know what happened there. <laughs> but what I do think is interesting is that like, listen, am I, if, if I'm teeny, am I devastated to lose Saul as a person? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. but theoretically teeny now has two people on the jury that stand a fairly good chance of voting for them should yeah, they true. make it to the end so yes you're sort of expending people in the game that would take you to the end i think both of them have kind of confirmed that they would want to take teeny to the end with them but at the yeah. same time you are doing ideally what survivor players want to do in the jury phase which is to put people who would vote for you on the jury unfortunately i don't think it's Teeny's calling that those shots though. It's like mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you stumble backwards into a victory, but at the moment, not a lot of uh, what is that? Like more like they're the passenger, not the pilot mm -hmm. in this situation mm -hmm. here. You want to be the driver. Um, they also brought up the whole signal versus noise, which I thought was an interesting metaphor. Yeah, I was like, Nate All Silver. Right. I kind of yeah, I kind of enjoyed that a little more than the usual uh analogies and metaphors we get. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I do worry for Teeny. I don't know what's going to go down. It feels like there's a scatter. This is it's like we're either going to go in one of two directions from this point. It almost feels like we're looking at the Rebas with the four Tukus, the four blue players. Although given the next time on, I don't know what that's looking like with si Sue's just oh losing God. it again. Yes. What is he's going to kill what Kyle? What is Kyle doing? Uh, like, I really hope that Kyle <laughs> gets back on the challenge win streak like he wins an individual reward challenge yep. and he doesn't bring Sue. I that's really what it sounds like. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> There's something going on. I'm like she's just had it out for him ever since I guess what? Like the first try. I don't day, know. Day what, day 5. Right. So I'm like, oh, that's back. Okay. Well, either that's smoke and mirrors and where it's like another Reba situation where the Rebas are still around and they're working mm. together and we're going to the end with the Rebas or it's going to be like, we've got all these outsiders and they're kind of big characters. And I'm wondering, is this starting to come together to where the Tukus might actually, they, they predicted this a couple episodes ago. We got this four block of blue. Are we going to start to look like a big threat of people, even though we're not fully cohesive, but like just to anyone else, we're four, we're a foursome. And it's like, we need to start getting taken out. Uh, they're going to look at us to take us out. I'm worried it's going to be one of those two. I'm not, I'm not really worried. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we kind of look at that direction and have more of a, take a shot, break up the four, get rid of the blue players a little bit. Like, you know, even the spread, um, not that I didn't like the Rebas in, in 45 dominating. I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the direction we're going here. And if so, great for Teeny. Teeny is going to be in a great spot at that point. But if not, could be a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, from some of the stuff that we've heard from 
uh, like I, I try to really pay attention to what are the little things that we hear about tribe dynamics that mm -hmm. were not being shown. So like, for example, when they were, t I can't remember who it was, but they were talking essentially about Sue and Caroline hate Kyle. And that really stood out mm. in my head because again, mm. I see Tuku as this four, like they're right. this four, they've worked together. They voted out Tiana together. Like they're all this solid group. And I have to constantly remind myself that like, that's not the case. And then this next time on felt like it just further solidified that, that, okay, there's more drama here, I think, than we think. And I think also to go back to what Jeff said about the power constantly swinging back and forth, you know, it could very easily be a Tuku member going next week. Like if Kyle loses, this could be Kyle's boot episode next week. Yeah, I think yeah. he was able to benefit from the fact that like Genevieve did make such a big turn because I would say probably eight out of 10 times normally it's an easy open and shut Kyle vote. Mm -hmm. Unless like, mm -hmm. you know, Sue chooses to use the idol on him, which would be absolutely incredible given their dynamic. But it seems like, again, with the Tuku dynamics, this isn't necessarily like a re before where like the four of them were locked in from the pre-merge. This really does seem like a trio and Kyle's just kind of there. It's like uh, Sifu's just there. It's just Sifu instead of like Drew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, so we just have Kyle kind of like, you know, a hanger on. It seems like he has a relationship with Gabe. We see them like whispering to each other in the hammock a couple times, but we really don't see him interacting at all with Sue or Caroline in general that I would imagine sooner rather than later, they're going to be convinced to basically turn on Kyle. And maybe Gabe is thinking what I was talking about with Teeny of him being like, listen, you know, if I let Kyle slide, I'm not going to be completely angry in having mm. him sit on the jury and helping me in my mm. best case scenario, baby bird final three. <laughs> Wound the wounded birds. The wounded birds. <laughs> uh, they're actually, so it's Caroline. She Caroline. had another cheerleader moment. Yes. Now, Mike, you've pointed that out. And now that's like all I can see whenever I see her. Like she's, I did think there was like last week, even I was like, yeah, there's a way that Caroline wins. Like, I think if her edit like really takes off, I think that there's a way that she could make a case for her to be the winner. But now I just, when they lost their vote and she was like, what did she say? I wrote it down. She was like, epic. That was epic to mm. Rachel. And Rachel finally managed with the thing. I was like, yes, the <laughs> our like biggest support system here on the island so that's the thing is that people uh have talked a lot about obviously the very emotional reactions to getting voted out by this cast like all the goodwill has pretty much just been concentrated in one person caroline has taken it upon her shoulders to be all of the hugs rah-rah element that people chastised in the new era whereas everyone else now gets to be their full selves but she was like so genuinely excited for rachel if i was in that situation i would be like this bitch like rachel yeah. knock it over like, like i want my vote back <laughs> yeah and it was an important time for her to have the vote too if it was going with what they were doing genevieve's like we need the four blue players and it's like uh-oh caroline can't but she's over there just like yes go rachel you got your vote i can't do anything my game is getting <laughs> sunk right yeah. now uh, well, let, let's talk about this because yeah i mean i think to peridium's point this whole starting a group and then eventually competing as individuals has been around since survivor 43 we've done it every season since something to note actually it's a little bit of a curse going on for all of you future players out there. The person who's voted out in the episode every time this challenge happens, mm -hmm. they always make it to the end. They always make it to the individual portion and they don't oh. win the immunity. Oh, okay. And then they're voted out later in the episode. So Because who, who is Dwight, it? It was Brandon uh, in 44. It, mm. was, um, it, was, it was Kendra in 45 where she lost to Bruce. 46, mm. it was Hunter who went up against Charlie. And then uh, in 47, it was, of course, uh, our good buddy Saul, who was standing there alongside Gabe, Kyle, and Teeny in right. the end. So Add it to the margarita curse. <laughs> yeah, it's tough because, like, then you could theoretically say, oh, well, then just sandbag this challenge. But clearly, they're trying to make sure that doesn't happen either, that they put in a penalty for last place. The groans from me when yeah. Jeff was like, and if you don't make it, you're going to lose your vote. Like, why? Please. That's a lot of people. Stop. That's like 40% of the tribe of this. What are we doing, Jeff? <sighs> but then I was happy, though, because it turned out we actually created a final nine vote. Yes. Before the final nine. And I'm like, well, that that could like, I'm like, hold on. Let, let them cook. Let's see what let they can cook. do here. I thought for a second, I agree with you. I, I I had to watch the episode late, but I had heard groans from across the coast. <laughs> like yeah. there are vote there are votes being lost right now and I couldn't watch it. 
uh, I was traveling, but I'm like, yeah, you know, but then I was like, wait, I'm like four people. That's too much. There's no way. And then it, I know it, it was one. I was like, okay, one vote. Oh, okay. It could be worse. That's fine. Well, cause that's what I thought. I was like, okay, well at least three are guaranteed to earn their votes back because right. I thought similarly, it was going to be that same thing where they go, they do the puzzle. And if they get it, they get their vote back. If they don't get it, they don't. And there's a universe mm. where none of them managed to get their votes back. So that's what I was anticipating. So I guess they just had to play a little Jenga game and then that's fine. But, um, but yeah. Oof. Yeah. Is, is there Browns. a better mechanism to do this? Like that's the tough thing is that from a journey perspective, I guess they want to put it in this epic rock outcropping for a location but that makes it fairly small potatoes in what they can do and you obviously want to make it equal i don't know maybe what they should have done is uh just rerun the last part of the immunity challenge oh, with the four people who lost their votes that's actually what i thought they were gonna do um so puya and i both thought that that well there's four and they had the first two groups so they're just gonna throw them up there and then essentially the first person to fall is the person who loses their vote so i actually probably would have Pref I, well, I don't know if I would have preferred that. Would I prefer to watch people stand on tiny things or stack little cards? Mm, wow. Neither sound particularly interesting, but I think I would prefer the the <laughs> standing on riveting. Little, I know <laughs> standing <laughs> or stacking. Oh boy! Well, I was thinking of the coach, the coach Wade scream throughout all that. Every yeah. time I see that, yeah. Every time I see that challenge come up, I'm like, if I was there, I'd just have to do that giant scream just one time for old time's sake. <laughs> Whereas the the whole, I was really confused because. The tower stacking thing, I don't know if this is, I've never done this before, but they were going super fast, I felt mm. like. And it wasn't even like, maybe, the maybe it's because the tide was rising around that they're like, okay, we only got two hours to do <laughs> is this. That what it, I'm like, are they being prompted to go? Because I'm like, this is all about precision. And like, you know, you got to make it perfect. Or even you can do it to where you're screening the next person over with the way you angle it. But they were in the same shot, just like, do, mm -hmm. do, do. I was like, he hello, what? this is great. Like, do you guys not care about your, okay. Uh, but then it, it didn't matter. So I was like, oh, maybe it's just a meat thing. Maybe it doesn't really matter at the end. I just said they were going really fast. That cove looked familiar also. That mm. looked like where Kenzie <laughs> took Jess and Bonu to like try to talk. Did, is no, that, is no, that what it was? Because they went to the Tuku camp for the merch, oh, which was that camp, which okay, is the gotcha. former Yanu. Uh, oh, okay. But yeah, it, it did look like, no, because that was the little like donut in, mm, at, mm -hmm. at, at, like uh, that's about like, probably about, I don't know, like 30 or so yards uh, from the camp, gotcha. which would be wild as well. If they just had the journey like down the beach. They do it for the reward winners. Like they don't need to go on a journey journey. Just send them down the beach to do their thing and then come on back. Yeah. You only have so much daylight. <laughs> that's why they're going so fast, pretty. Them. They were like, that's it. Sun setting. Let's do this. I mean, you can give it like an extra five, 10 seconds per, but uh, yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. It was a lot of, there were a lot of triangles being made. <laughs> a question that God asked to me that I would love to pose to the two of you is, okay, so the rules are, if you are trying to place the piece and the tower collapses, mm -hmm. you lose your vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, if you are able to, I don't know, like slightly, if Rachel's trying to put a piece in, and you let an errant sneeze go, or you like a no, it's, it's on the sneezer. Come on, <laughs> if you sneeze, that's on you. Like that's not Rachel's fault. What if three people sneeze at the same time? We're gonna have to instant replay it. <laughs> that's the thing. Can't yeah, but all three of us. <laughs> the counteracting forces, at least those two, cancel each other out. So it's really it's just a, the the one right, anyway. Right, because they stood. And if it, what yeah. if they all four sneeze at the same? They all move. Okay, the other three move to this side. Yeah, that's what happens. If, that if I see someone wind up and sneeze, I'm going to also sneeze at the same time to counteract <laughs> it. Oh no! Oh my god! It's a defense mechanism. I was I, the other thing I thought was I was like they should negotiate. They should say, look. Three of us are going to have our vote. Who can we get as allies to make sure that none of us go home? Like one person yeah. could, you know, volunteer potentially to be like, look, I'm willing to do this if you guys promise that, you know, you keep me safe or something like that. That's mm, what I want. That would be good. See, if I'm being honest, because I just love it when players are forced to have to negotiate and make decisions. So, th right. and that's actually why I kind of don't mind the pairing challenge because, and we got to hear people actually articulate their strategy of you want to pick someone who's strong enough to help you get through the first levels of the challenge, but also someone who isn't going to beat you in the final part of the challenge. Right. So I think that's really fun to see. And then there's, of course, there's a social dynamics on top of it to see who ultimately gets paired with whom. Yeah, though I feel like we still have yet to get 
basically what Q wanted Maria and Charlie to do in 46, right? Of like, do you pick someone that you don't want to win and then basically just sit on your hands in the first mm. part of the challenge? And again, maybe now they're, they because they are now bringing in this mechanic more frequently of like, okay, if you finish in last, you stand a chance of losing your vote to disincentivize people from doing that because while it does make for some good TV, it doesn't make for other good TV. Yeah. And we basically get like, what would have happened if uh, Frankie Grande wasn't able to win the Battle of the Block while Beast Mode's Cowboy sat on the yeah, side? Yeah, it's like, am I going to bring it up or is, or is one of you two going to bring it up? This, that's what we're getting. <laughs> I mean, as a survivor that's connection, that's, that's a, that's a two time player for you. Yeah, Caleb, everybody oh, yeah. knows Caleb Reynolds, you know, who couldn't forget uh, him. Such a game changer. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah, I guess that's a strategy there. Um, I like the editing leading up to it. it. It made me laugh a little bit when they showed two different pairs of people being like Sam and Andy. And Andy's like, maybe we can just bro down and like connect, reconnect. And then Sam's like, I picked him because I can beat him. Yeah. And then it went the other way with like Gabe's like, if you want anyone, I want Kyle. And Kyle's like, yeah, I picked him because I can beat him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, I like, love that. But I also yeah. like that that Sam's like, I'm going to pick Andy. Also, forgetting the fact that like Andy and challenges don't go incredibly well together and right. like, i'm, That's I'm trying to remember part. was it andy who ripped the bag or sam <laughs> but even remember. then they said like they ripped the bag but then they still couldn't dig out the log or the planks or whatever it was yeah. like i just it just feels like anything that can and will go wrong will go wrong for andy in a challenge like it doesn't matter yep. uh, well let's let's <laughs> call andy. our shot right now because i think from my perspective, at least, given the, the story of it all, I think Andy is primed to make it pretty dang far into the end game. Will he win an individual immunity challenge this season, Liana? No. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. <laughs> what do you think, Peridium? Gosh, I mean, the odds get better with every episode. True. At some point, it's got to pay off, right? One of those, I've, it, he's been gift to hell and back with his performances. At some point, it's got to come together. And hell, eventually he'll be able to finish after all that air humping. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so much. What's the what's the point? There's no payoff in the end. I'm gonna say sure. Let's give it to okay. him. I, I'm gonna say it only because you said no. But like honestly, I'd probably say no. <laughs> but I'm gonna say yes. I'll put money. Okay. In yes. Wait, then Mike, which uh, break the tie? Who are you going Ooh. with? I, I got to go with yes just to manifest it just because okay, it okay. would be I'm a pretty it'd be a pretty objectively not only great thing for him because again we talk about survivor bucket list all the time but like to see Andy be able to do it and maybe that's part of the narrative of like the he's all that nobody thought I could actually put anything together but here I am yeah. able to to win a dominant immunity challenge I'm not sure at this moment what would be the best one to do <laughs> considering that we have had like you could say okay, if he's clumsy, then let's do the one where he has to just stand still. He's done that one as well, and it hasn't gone great for him, but every mm -hmm. dog has his day. Yeah. What have we seen Andy excel at in the challenges? Has there been something, it's like, oh, okay, Andy's really good at that. What about, like, swimming or a balance beam during some of the team hmm. like the tribe challenge individual immunity challenges i'm trying to think if there's been like a moment where it's well, like well okay. he did he did struggle on the balance beam in the water okay so not that um <laughs> did he, but he he was good at swimming i feel like and getting the buoy did he yeah, do well like the, yeah, i think he did the basketball maybe out the buoy mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't okay. remember I'm trying much to of, design all of my challenge. memories are him right. doing yeah buoy? i know I know. Unfortunately, my mostly air humping, I would say, are like most of the things that and I remember. Sawing wasn't Andy. great. Okay, so maybe yeah, what they do, let's go back to the big brother of it all. Remember that one coach's challenge where like they had to like hump yes. as many times as possible? Yes, maybe they'll I bring do, that back. <laughs> yes, I have Enzo doing that. Burned into my brain, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be interesting. Okay, look, I'm all for manifesting. So I think, you know, even though I personally don't think I'm gonna happen, I will happily support the the energy. <laughs> I mean, to, get to be win. fair, we are coming off of a final immunity challenge last season where a man who got like zero sleep over the course of an entire week ends up winning a challenge that's based entirely on concentration. So like mm. anything can mm. happen out there on Survivor. And so I think when not if Andy is going to win and then he will deliver an epic speech on the mat to kind of bookend the epic speech in a very different way that he had in the very first episode. Oh, that would be fun. I like that. There were um there were two other moments for me that mm. I thought were quite interesting. So one, there was a confessional from Sue. Sue said, "If I lose G Gabe, my game is shot." I thought that was very interesting mm. because 
I obviously I understand that they're close, but I think I didn't realize like how much Sue is putting her eggs in the Gabe basket. And I don't know. Well, she has a why. bird. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Cause he's going to take care of the little baby birds and the eggs, I assume presumably as well. Uh, but that was very interesting to hear. So yeah. um, I'm sort of like mentally noting that of like, okay, this is going to come into fruition. I think later on at some point, I'm like curious to see maybe even next week's episode. Well, especially if Gabe, if Gabe gets taken out and then Sue's like her game gets lost shot. or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or right. or Sue plays an idol on Gabe. If right. She finds or out fights that he's for Gabe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because because to your point, okay. Leon, I was struck surprised by Saul talking to me about the fact that apparently him and Sue were very tight. Uh, that he she was mm. one of Saul's secret angels because actually they had a really entrenched bond over Parkinson's disease. Uh, that Sue had a relative who had Parkinson's and Saul. For those that don't know, he's a medical device salesperson and he works specifically with like those that have neurodegenerative diseases and sort mm -hmm. of like DBT for that. And so it's interesting in that they were so intrinsically involved in each other's game. But I think for various circumstances, like Saul doesn't want to get rid of Sue. He's basically told, OK, if you want to survive, get rid of Sue. So he kind of goes along with the plan. But it seems like whenever Sue's presented with a choice of like cast off someone who might be in your corner or turn against the Tukus, she always goes with the former. And it's a good question of like, is this going to be what sinks her game? Whether it's like her using an idol on Gabe and getting voted out herself, or she goes to the end with someone like Gabe and doesn't get a lot of looks from the jury just because, yeah, she's got a hell of a story, especially for a 45 year old. But at the same time, she has put Gabe basically above her own prerogative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, was that, you, Liana, you said there were more than one. Is that one of the two things you remembered? You oh, yeah. Out? Okay. So that was one thing. So I'm thinking future storyline sort of thing. Okay. So, so that was the first thing I thought of. The second one is that we got, I was really happy that we got to see Rachel's justification for playing the shot in the dark and like gauging the reaction. To me, that was interesting that the show gave her that ability to explain her moves. And then oh, also yeah. that in combination with her and the relationship with Sam, that felt really important. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it means yet um, because they, it's it's not like they were like, oh, we're going to work together. It was, we're going to maybe kind of look out for each other. Maybe uh, if we uh, do it, maybe. I, I loved <laughs> It was like uh, when the two spies sit next to each other on a bench and like are staring straight forward <laughs> when Rachel's like, I can't tell you what's going on, but I'm looking out for you, wink, wink. And Sam's like, all right, I'm just going to throw out a guess here. It proceeds to guess exactly what's happening. Yep. And Rachel's yep. like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just uh, <laughs> don't, but don't vote for Saul and don't blow up my game. And by the end of the episode, Sam has done both. Yeah. I yeah. I did wonder, like, what are the ramifications going to be for Rachel now? Because she said mm -hmm. her strategy was to wanting to get close to the Tukus and like not blow. She wants to prove some loyalty to the people in power as an underdog. And then Sam decided to completely undo all of that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, we haven't really heard much. Um, I suspect we'll hear some more about that in the next episode. Uh, that was an interesting uh, turnaround of, and I was really glad Sam did that in a way because it made things way more interesting because it just all of a sudden I was like, this, what if this leads to like Rachel getting taken up? But it didn't, didn't seem to go back to her much. A yeah, little I bit, thought, but I thought there was a chance crazy. it might've gone on to Sam actually of like, okay, Rachel being like, okay, he's doing too much. Let's try to turn it onto him. But uh, yeah, I thought that too. But I think the thing about this particular round was that for whatever reason, the primary targets were too easy. Like I think both Sam and Kyle mm. came into this episode as probably two of the biggest people to talk about to get rid of before the immunity challenge kyle with his you know challenge threat status and sam due to the fact that like he just lost his number one ally he's kind of a sitting duck at this point and i think whether it be like the the sabayiness of this cast whether it be the new era causing people to like go big game hunting they almost immediately get discounted because they're like yeah we can take care of them later let's focus on these other individuals at the moment mm -hmm. i mean there were like three separate targets in that round of play there with i thought that was really interesting how we had three distinct groups with three distinct plans all swirling around and then it all just creates this calamity this whirlwind and you know the sam and rachel of it all we saw at the beginning of the episode i thought was really fascinating the goddess are front and center and i'm kind of here for it i'm really looking for i was after rachel survived with that saul saving her situation i was kind of like i don't know where this came from but i have this weird passion me now i'm like i kind of want rachel to win like i'm rooting for her a lot i was on another podcast a couple weeks ago, and i was like 
I feel like Rachel all of a sudden just showed up and I'm like, I made a video about this. And I just discounted her completely. I, I, I like put down all the players on the street. I was like, yeah, Rachel, and Annika, whatever. They're not going to win. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what? I feel pretty good about her. And I like Andy and Sam's given my Carol and my wife loves Sam. I didn't realize how much she's like, I like Sam. I like, oh. she just, she just likes him. She's like, Hey, he's really cool. You know, you know, she's like, I enjoy how he hasn't done anything. And now he's experiencing life. And I was like, ah, oh. she's like, she thinks he might win. And I'm like, all right, we'll see. You never know. Like with so, the, the fruit and stuff. He's experiencing right, right. Like, I'm a pineapple guy now. <laughs> hey, a blue guy to a pineapple guy. Yeah. <laughs> now I wanted to point out, this is something that I thought of. This is super random and completely out of left field, but when they're on the reward and they're all eaten, the four mm -hmm. of them, and they all had the burping montage of mm. Saul. But he said to he said in confessional, he his family didn't burp around each other. And I just went, is that a thing? Do people just not burp around their family? Because I personally never thought that was a thing. But then he I said that he said and I they went, did. He, he no. says that he he only burps around people that he's comfortable. Oh, around. okay. I thought maybe I misheard it, but I was like, and I didn't realize like, it was, is, it, uh, is is this the the gastrointestinal equivalent of like sitting in the hammock? We're like, I'm so comfortable, I'm burping. And they're like, No, 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 you've gotten too big in your too head. Comfortable. Exactly. We gotta get rid of you here. <laughs> well, that's what they say, right? Don't get too comfortable. Saul got too comfortable and went immediately went home. <laughs> I guess I was like, Do people not grow do people grow up not burping around their family if they're not like ever? Like, mm. do you guys ever burp around your significant it was, others? It was not polite. So right. I, well, there's an element of that, but like, you know. No. So it's no. A burp. Okay, no. My you wouldn't burp around your family. I, we were like very stoic Swedish white people. Uh, like we don't we don't do that sort of thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was not apparently raised in Downton Abbey like Liana was. But no, I was absolutely <laughs> okay because like, I would fill, burp fill the house care. with gas. Oh no! Ew! No! <laughs> no. You yeah, know, you have like a nice bowl of cottage cheese and then you start. Burping. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my nightmare. Those two things, both my equally my nightmare. So if yeah. there was a reward where you were starving on Survivor, where it's like have a big bowl, like uh, all you could eat cottage cheese. Oh, my God. You throw I, would, it? I would rather eat the grubs than cottage cheese. Like, Jeff give reveals me those it at the worms. auction and you're like, can I have my money back? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm not, I'm not, this is not a Kyle moment. I'm not overcoming my, my hatred <laughs> of cottage cheese. It's just not happening oh boy all right good to know i was just curious about that i was like eh, it's an interesting comment well let's talk about a guy who was an absolute gas in this mm. game let's stick with saul rob talked about this when i i discussed saul's interview in the preseason that to him he seemed almost enigmatic mm. liana you picked saul as part of your draft team i think sort of ascribing the same logic or lack thereof to it so how did you think he was gonna do before this all started Yes. Okay. So I had Saul making the merge. I said that Saul came into the game with low key energy. So no need to tune down that big personality, which is what something <laughs> I remember he was like, Oh, I'm going to be such a big personality. Um, but anyway, so uh, that allows him to form a tight three with teeny and Asia almost this trio runs lavo pre-jury and comes into the merge as a strong group naturally gata and tuku were suspicious of a tight three tika three anyone as <laughs> as saul was the biggest out in front large target of the lavo three he was deemed the first to go by gabe we got several confessionals about Saul power helping to propel him through the game, but sadly Tuku got to pull the plug and he runs out of juice mid jury. His allies were teeny in Asia and his enemy was Gabe. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Well, we're back. Okay. The same page here, Liana. I had Saul also making mm -hmm. the jury. Uh, so I had said that, Saul quickly seeks out his pregame connection with Teeny, and alongside Roman Asia is brought into this dominant Lavo Tories alliance that I think mm -hmm. now like are all but gone at this point uh, in our predictions. While Saul is one of the quieter members of his tribe, he'll be remembered for two things. A random scene showing off his Saul power. I think you and I were really in on Saul power, uh, which I think speaks to like, again, the mystery that he was in the preseason and his growing resentment towards Rome. The latter culminates in the post-merge when he's convinced by Sue to turn on his alliance and blindside Rome. With Saul making his big move, all eyes are on him. Unfortunately, his strategic jump fails to have him grabbing anything meaningful. He ends up becoming an easy next boot as the solitary vote that isn't against him. 
His closest ally was Teeny, and his enemy was Rome. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that's actually so wild, Mike, because I, so like, I put them in the order, essentially a boot order, essentially, and then I write the predictions, and I have, my boot order is the exact, it's flipped, but I have Saul, then Rome. Wow. <laughs> you had Rome, then Saul. <laughs> Damn, so how did weird. you guys get that? That's wild. That's like <laughs> super accurate. It's the most accurate I think I've heard every time I've been on here. You guys are <laughs> I mean, both, like, any day of the week, you could have been the one that pick, I would have picked. If, yeah, is that wait. what we're doing, right? Do I get to pick between yeah, the two Yeah, you get to pick. Yeah, 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 Leon yeah, yeah, and I are yeah. just, this is a season of broken clocks. Like, yes. Leon and I are just, like, touting, do not expect this, people, for Survivor 48 or beyond. I think we're going to have a, a terrible season next season where we're just going to have everything wildly off to make up yes. for the fact that we are not yes. only in simpatico, but also, like, relatively good, I think, so far on the way that people actually turned out in this game. Mm-hmm. How far did you guys have Lovett going? I just had him going. The, I think we both had him going pre-merge. Yeah. Pre-merge. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, wow. I mean, honestly, if, if for a minute, I was like, I think Liana just hit the nail on the head there, but uh, then Mike almost hit it even harder. I think I'm going to give it to Mike with the whole antagonism Rome. of Rome and yeah. uh, the boot yeah. after he, Rome uh. goes and then not long after Saul goes. And, but honestly, that's the both. Those are both really accurate. Like, you, you guys have watched Survivor before. <laughs> I feel like you watched the best it. compliment someone's ever paid me. <laughs> you, you I don't like say, you get to say that very often. You, but. sir, you seem like someone who's watched Survivor. <laughs> you know your Survivor preseason picks. Wow, what a compliment. <laughs> uh, no, I as soon as you said the Rome antagonistic thing, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> because they're close enough on everything else. But I think I think that was good. I'm so devastated, though, that we didn't get any soul power. I know. I'm so mad. I thought that was apparently, obviously, both of us thought that that was going to be a bigger part of his personality. <laughs> well, it's interesting, though, because to your point, and I don't know if uh, either one of you listened to On Fire this week, but like Jeff usually mm. gives his kind of mm. like pregame notes on people and he admitted on the podcast that they were surprised by Saul, that Saul was like actually quieter and a bit more in himself mm. on the island than they initially expected when they cast him. Again, maybe speaking towards <laughs> to that point, Liana, like this guy's an extrovert by nature. And for some reason, he was just curtailing it a lot on the island. So maybe that Saul power just was an, got naturally cut off the second his feet hit the sand. Okay, but even... Even his interview with you, for example, was not like, oh, this guy's shot out of a cannon kind of thing. Like, I, I, and we were all like, oh, he's saying there he's this big, quiet, like crazy personality. And we're just not seeing that in the interview. I want to see his audition tape or like his conversation, you know, in the like in the at finals, whatever that yeah. finals interview looked like. Like, I want to see that. Like, who is that person? But I do think eventually we got to see more and more of Saul's personality. And, you know, he even talks about last week's episode being very conscious about cultivating the way that others mm -hmm. perceive him about being this oh i'm just this goofy guy you know um <laughs> and so i think it seems like he put a lot of energy and effort into that so maybe we didn't like really even get to see his full soul power you know until mm. till the end yeah, yeah it seems to happen sometimes i want to see saul's audition tape where he's dressed up in a bikini in the freezing snow and yeah waving around saying put me on survivor yeah, eating dog shit like chris hammond <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow, I didn't know he did that. That's wild. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yep. he, uh, he ate he ate dog poop. Was it real though? We can't confirm, but yeah, wow. That's uh, one last question I have on Saul is like now that the Saul Rome pairing has now officially mm. been eliminated, either in either order that Liana or I suggested. <laughs> how do they rank in terms of modern day survivor rivalries? Now, look. 46 more than made up for maybe a lack of rivalries in the new era. But how do we look back on the Saul and Rome rivalry now that both of them are done and dusted? Uh, I, I had a good time with them. I think, and especially in hindsight, like I, I was enjoying them in the moment, but I know a lot of people were frustrated with Rome, mm -hmm. but you know, now they're both gone and it's like, Oh, bummer. But I guess it kind of makes sense why uh, Saul was a little more muted. He, he only made it halfway through the season. Uh, it would have been nice if he'd made it longer. I don't know if it's going to be an all-timer, you know, but I'm, I enjoyed both of them enough that like, if they brought either of them back, I'd be like, let's go. Let's see what they have. Although I do wonder now, like what's Saul going to do the second time around without say Rome without there? Rome. You without... would need like a rivals cast at this point. To be fair, both. you could be like, uh, Oh, what's Sandra going to do on her second season without Johnny Fairplay? Like they'll find an ops. Well, I they, think they, they definitely, <laughs> right. They will need another Rome. There's probably a whole, anyone from survivor 46, put them on a tribe with Rome. 
or put them in a tribe with Saul and we got it all over again. Let's go. So maybe it's that. Maybe that's what we're looking for. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting because obviously Rome's shenanigans don't start as shenanigizing against Saul, right? Like it Amen. starts with Rome just being this out loud, intense personality with the rest of the Lavos, right? And then it slowly develops into this Saul specific rivalry. Like I'm thinking the, the classic Jim Helpert moment with Teeny looking back to the camera, you know, while they're having their little kerfuffle on Lavo Beach. So it did seem personal eventually that it was Saul versus Rome, but it also feels like Rome is just an enigma in and of himself. So I don't really think of them per se as a pair. I think of oh my god rome and then poor saul having to put up with rome and it's tough because you know i ended up doing the out bid out pay out draft thing about survivor rivals and there was a legitimate discussion about randy bailey and it's like mm -hmm. okay does the fact that randy had rivalries with sugar and with crystal help and hurt things and like while short-lived rome did have a rivalry with asia where he mm -hmm. was you know possibly spitting fish on her who's to say and so does that like help or hurt Rome's case that yes, he has this more long held rivalry with Saul, mm -hmm. but also Asia burned, you know, hotter and faster. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm, I'd be fine with the, uh, I'd say Rome is a little more power there. I think I agree with your take with like Saul. He, he, it's the, whoever he's against, he sort of came out, but also that kind of goes for everyone in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, we enjoyed Saul for his character and who he was in spite of, I don't even know if you need Rome for that, but I enjoyed him. I, I liked, I liked Saul a lot. I was disappointed. I was like, how, mm -hmm. first of all, how dare you target like Genevieve? How dare you just target Saul like that? Like, what are we doing here? Why are we not going with the Tika, the Tika three or whatever? Like, let's, why not? We got, we got like this Lavo tribe on paper. I was rooting for them in the pre-merge, but I'm mm -hmm. like, man, these guys are like not, not looking so hot here with the whole mm -hmm. Keyshawn thing. And, so yeah, I don't know. I know the lava Maybe. three. What could have been? That's what I mean when you said that. I was like, that's like the alternate. That's like best case scenario. I, I was envisioning where we get the teenies and the ages and the souls going, going the distance well, and working together. And then well, it's yeah, like, it's it's, kind of, it's that rare outcome we get where if all three of them had made it to the final tribal council, they would have faced a jury who had not played with any of them in the pre merge. Um, mm. Sort of like what we got with uh, with. I, I'm trying to think. Uh, with with Tika, we would have gotten that with the Tika final three if it if mm -hmm. Carson had gotten eliminated at four. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's kind of where I actually thought things were headed, especially given the fact that we saw, oh, okay, Saul's picking up Rachel and Genevieve is picking up Andy, and Saul mm -hmm. also kind of has Andy. Like I was like, okay, we're getting some momentum, <laughs> and knowing that the Tukus hate Kyle, I was like, okay, great, all right, Kyle's gonna go, and then they'll get Gabe, and you know, I could see this momentum, and then you know, obviously with Genevieve. Uh, flipping in the way she did but i just think that there's more to those so those relationships that yeah. we're just not privy to and that's why it went the way it did yeah exactly if this episode is any indication it's always a great reminder that not only can things shift on a dime but there might be things that people are thinking and doing that we're not privy to we had no idea that genevieve was kind of sitting and stewing for the better part of 10 days waiting to get her revenge on yeah. saul uh you know as much as we're sort of lampooning sue for doing so with kyle Genevieve is arguably kind of doing the same thing with Saul here. I'm sure she had other motives as well to get rid of him. But I mean, when someone explicitly says that I'm petty and that's the reason why I'm targeting him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it like it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, that was part of the main logic of why when we got that confessional, that <laughs> seemed to be part of the main motivation, at least that the show told us. So, yeah. I, I would I love it if she gets to the final tribal and she's in front of the jury. Like, what, Saul, I took you. I was petty. Honestly, it was just pettiness. It was just me. I'm like, but this, oh, they'd be like, yeah, respect. I understand. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's the honesty. And uh, well, and I think that that's what we're hearing now from juries a lot is we just want you to be honest. Like, we yeah. don't want you to claim something that's not true. We would rather you just say like, yeah, I kind of held a grudge. Sorry about it, but I'm sitting here and you're not. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, let's take a break from our own thoughts. And let's think about the thoughts of the Facebook casuals. So mm. we're going to be playing casuals corner this week. I actually have split the format um, of the game up into two sections because Ooh. I realized oh, like we the, have like not the immunity challenge. just like the, exactly. Just like this episode, 
Um, and that was motivated, obviously, by the episode. That was, I totally thought of that. <laughs> I, I thought of that. Mike didn't just point it out just now. Um, but also because we haven't checked in with the casuals at all. So I yeah. wanted to first just get an idea of what they're thinking about different castaways this season. And then uh, we'll get into sort of our regular thoroughfare. So the way that this is going to work is... The first section format of the game is going to be which one had more likes. So I will read to you two real comments from the Facebook page, and then it will be up to you to decide which one had more likes. We'll start with that format and then get into our traditional format with four comments, three are real, one's fake. Which one is the fake one? So Mike, we will start with you in the first format of the game. Which one had more likes? Oh boy. Is it comment A? I was so hoping for Sue interesting how she stays under the radar there must be a reason that she isn't shown actually thankfully they don't focus much on her she is just not someone i can get behind <laughs> so like yeah i was so weirded out about the first part of that of like i was pulling for sue i was <laughs> like was did, she, did she get voted out did I not did i watch the wrong episode but no it turns out that they've just basically given up on her right <clears throat> okay. Or is it comment B? I was kind of hoping to see the blind side on Sue, dot, dot, dot. But after watching Saul eat and burp, I was happy to see him go. Laughing Ooh. face emoji. Okay. So how many of the Boris family members are on Facebook? How un <laughs> how uncool. Like and comment. Well, you <laughs> gas. Oh. A, you might be on an island, but you're no savage, Solomon. <laughs> um, I will I will go with ooh. That's a great question. Like, mm -hmm. are people more disgusted by Sue or disgusted by Saul's burping? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to go with B because B is also not pro Sue. So it kind of has the best of both worlds there. Okay. So you guess comment B. I'm sorry. That's incorrect. It was A. They there love Saul. They love, 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 oh, okay. love, 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 Saul. Like, what? I, not since Caroline have I seen, or Carolyn from uh, 44, have say, I Caroline. seen. <laughs> not since not the Caroline. woman on this season. <laughs> not, yeah, not since earlier this season. Uh, no, I, uh, they, they love him. And I think it's because they hate Rome. <laughs> ah, the enemy, oh. the enemy. Yes. That's my, that's my interpretation. I don't know if that is real or not um okay Good for Saul so, he's got the Facebook casuals that's always a small W and I think he has the fans fans too like oh he's got yeah for sure I think he's liked. got like Twitter edit all that so yeah it is interesting yeah like I wonder if by the end of this like I'm sure Rob's fact checker will do some sort of like popularity I mean from what Rob's fact checker said I believe Saul went out with like the fifth highest popularity that Rob's fact checker has had in conducting the popularity poll since like Survivor 43 or something. A lot of people have been yeah. speculating that Jeff Probst said in an interview that one person from 47 is like in consideration for 50. And I know that sort of was like the question on everyone's minds. Maybe it's Saul. Maybe. Though I don't know. Sure. Because production apparently didn't see what they thought they'd see out of Saul, but the fans did. So you have to kind of weigh that in your minds. Yeah, exactly. Uh okay. So Peridium, we're gonna go to you next. Which one has more likes? Is it? Genevieve is looking like the next D. Someone needs to put a wasp in her bonnet before she wins this game. She did say she had a bee in her bonnet about Saul. I think that's what the reference is to. Did she? Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I missed that. <laughs> is it A or B? Genevieve is wiping the floor with this cast. Oh, okay. Uh... Gosh. I'm going to say B. B. Okay. Uh, no, it was. I was a. wrong. Oh. It was, ah, yes. As the old Jenna D comparison. They don't like her as yes. much. No. But she is wiping the floor at the moment. They, no, they don't really like Well, I mean, Jenna look at pretty. That's look true. what she just did in the most recent episode to Saul. Got rid of the fave. <laughs> That's exactly. true. I should have thought about that. And also was more. working with Rome for a considerable amount of the season. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. I get it. I don't align with Facebook. That happens. It happens. That's okay. You have multiple chances. <laughs> Many more chances to see if your your views align. Mike, let's go back to you, though, for the moment. Which one has more likes? Is it A, 
Rachel sucks. <laughs> Saul saved her and she votes him off two weeks later. Oh, yeah. This yeah, is I can see that. Or is it B? Kyle should start doing some strategic moves because you need more than winning immunity challenges to win Survivor. Dot, dot, dot. I like him. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that's interesting that the caveat would be towards the end because I would imagine that while people probably love, 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 love Saul more, take away like three of those loves and that's probably what they ascribe to Kyle because I think mm -hmm. Kyle ticks all the boxes, right? Yeah. Has this really heartwarming story. Seems like a really nice guy. Wins challenges. Helps out around camp. Doesn't commit any huge cutthroat moves. In fact, was left out of a mm -hmm. couple of votes because of those connections. So, so this feels like soft coaching. It doesn't feel like, oh, I hate Kyle because of this. So that's what gives me pause. But I'm just going to go with Occam's razor here and say that they don't like Rachel because Saul saved her single-handedly and then she that's joined in on getting rid too. of him. I'm like, yeah, I think it's A. Yeah, that's, uh, that is correct. The, yeah. uh, th there is a lot of love for Kyle, for sure. But what was interesting, it, it, it was a lot of comments like this, which was, I really like Kyle, but I need him to do something strategic. Like they're hmm. almost becoming self-aware of realizing that the game is more than just like being a good old boy. You got to actually like do something. So, uh, so while there was a lot of love for Kyle, uh, there was more hate for Rachel <laughs> turning on soul. Shocker. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay. Here's our uh, final question of this format. Which one has more likes? And this one's for Peridium. <clears throat> is it comment a survivor? Please cast more Sauls and less Romes. And definitely give them more of the edit. Obnoxious guys like Rome and Banu make this show unwatchable, yet they dominate the screen time. Banu is that space. yet? That needy leaks. Now, why am I in this? <laughs> <laughs> so that was comment A. And comment B. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do my best like interpretation of this comment. First of all, it's in all caps. Okay, okay so just great. keep okay. that in mind. All, all caps, all caps. I'm going to take a step back. I'm so sad Saul is gone, dot, dot, dot. I liked him a lot, dot, dot, dot. I was hoping he would, trophy emoji, win Survivor after all the crap hoop emoji he put up with from Rome, dot, dot, dot. Still happy they got him off the island, island emoji, dot, dot, dot. But so sad face emoji, another sad face emoji, another sad face emoji, a uh, crying sad face emoji. Sad Saul is gone, dot, dot, dot. Love Survivor, dot, dot, dot. Love Jeff, uh, fire emoji, fire emoji, and then like the bi uh pride flag, but in hearts like a blue heart, a purple heart, and a red heart. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that was how I interpreted it. <laughs> wow, like copy pasta with the use of emojis. <laughs> it was, I don't, yeah. What's the uh, what's the meta on Facebook with that? Well, there's the meta, of Facebook literally meta, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with Facebook's emojis and caps, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'd find that incredible. I would not like that. I mean, maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> Although maybe I agree with it, but maybe I don't. Um, gosh. And then the first one was more. More souls, less Rome. Okay, can you reread B again? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, love Survivor. Love Jeff. <laughs> you're right. Gosh. Uh, one of them sounds like reacting in the moment. But the other one, I guess I'll just say B because you you went through all that. Yeah, that only had three likes. No, <laughs> too extreme. <laughs> too extreme. The emojis turned them off. I was one too of much, them. Too much. Yeah, the oh, wow. uh, the top. Yeah, the top comment had had ninety eight likes. So, oh, um, okay. Well, I think especially like yes, there was a reference to Rome in the second one, but it feels like catnip for the casuals is to just bag mm -hmm. on Rome. Yeah. 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 Also, the other one was very difficult to read. Like reading in all caps is just quite challenging. Um, okay, but no worries. We have a close game. Mike, you're up by one, and we're going to go back to you. But now we are moving into the second part of the episode. So these are four comments I'm going to read for you. You have to decide which one is fake. Three are real. One is fake. Okay. These comments are all about Andy. Oh, no. A, he looks like Johnny Depp. B. Oh, I can't, I can't see that. That guy, Andy, looks like Gilbert Grape. <laughs> See. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, hi, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> or D, something creepy about him reminds me of the Depp character in Secret Window. <laughs> okay, so we've got three Depps and one Leo Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, they're all no, they're oh, all. No, Johnny Depp. Oh, Johnny oh, Depp. I, thought, I thought I was referring to uh, Leo and what's he to Gilbert Grape. No, 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 no. <laughs> Looks actually like a Gilbert Grape. 
So, okay, Johnny gotcha. Depp. So four Johnny Depps. I didn't really see it before it got pointed out here. So thank Damn. you, casuals. Oh God. Okay, this is this is really splitting uh finely quaffed hairs that Andy is teasing out with his finger as he commits chaos around him. So we have an outright reference to Jack Sparrow. We uh -huh. have a secret window reference, a Gilbert mm -hmm. Grape reference, mm -hmm. and Johnny Depp outright. Yep. I'm going to go with the fun one, which is Ahoy, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I liked the use of Ahoy. <laughs> I don't know why. That really made me laugh. Ahoy. Uh, but yeah, there were multiple references on multiple posts calling I and mean, it didn't look like it wasn't the same profile so it wasn't like the same person being like oh yeah this guy is definitely johnny the bots depp. are infiltrating facebook to post about <laughs> how much andy looks like johnny depp yeah i don't know why that was necessary for them but um but yeah and and now i kind of see it a little bit yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. i can see it too i kind of i did sort of notice it a, a week or so i was like oh he is looking a lot more like island hot now as they say so mm -hmm. Well, all right, there you go. All that humping, so that air <laughs> humping. Uh, okay, so Peridium, we're going to go back to you, and we're going to talk about some of the other cast members that are on this season. Mm -hmm. Comment A, Gabe must have weirdly thin feet. B, why is Caroline even still around? C, Rachel is a traitor. D, Sam is using the blunt rock mentally and probably not long before moving from player to jury pool. <laughs> the what? The blunt rock? Blunt the rock? blunt rock mentally. So is that to assume that like he's a burnout or is it that like, is it like kind of fitting a square peg into a round hole? Like he's trying to be sharp, but he's using the blunt end of the rock. Yeah. Like the tool is bad. Gotcha. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Interesting. I'm going to say A because I don't know why, <laughs> but it just seemed odd. Yeah. Did you, you write that? that? You wrote the yeah. feet one? <laughs> I was like, that sounds like something. I know. Right. It like something. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's not always the thing. It's like I'm trying, obviously trying to be the casuals, but I think it really says more about me than it does. <laughs> I'm like, would Liana write about feet? I'm like, I think she could. I think yeah, she could like, do I think I, I don't know if they'd point that out. I think Rachel was a traitor was like probably the easiest slam. Dunk yeah, I was like, that's, that's a, if that's casual. it, then it's like, there's no yeah. way. Like, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they hate. Yeah, they don't. They don't like Rachel. Um. All right, Mike, we're going back to you. Uh, this category I just have called who? Oh, no. All right. Uh, A, why would lady with glasses who Saul saved vote for him? I thought they were cool. That sounds like Jeff introducing Rachel in the first episode. Lady with glasses who Saul saved with the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, is it B, Gage needs a haircut? Is it, <laughs> is it, is it C, uh, I liked you waiting for that creepy guy to leave? Or is it D, rooting for Tyler, dot, dot, dot. I can't stand Andy, dot, dot, dot. Please it's someone Tyler. vote him out. So I'm assuming if I speak casual, Tyler, I think is Kyle. Oh, uh, okay. I had no idea. Like autocorrect it because there's like their son is Tyler or something. Or they're just like, oh, what's his name? Tyler, something like Tyler, that. Tyler, Tyler. They both have uh, this is tough. Or they love Tyler Fredrickson from Worlds Apart and they're waiting mm. for him to come back and win. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, that that's one. a guy with thin feet because he was a kicker. Uh, all right. So <laughs> got Tyler. We've got Gabe. Gage, Gage. needs a haircut. Mm -hmm. We've got girl with the glasses. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, uh, C was, uh, I like, I hope he wins and Andy creeps me out. Uh, no, it was, I liked you waiting for that creepy guy to leave. Oh, so, so creepy guy, I, I don't know, like, I, maybe that might be about Andy. And also, I don't know, why are they speaking in second person? Like, to whom are they referring? Mm. Which sounds perfectly casual. Uh, I don't think you put two misspellings in one. I'm going to say you went with Gage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I gotcha. Yeah. Plus, I feel, like, I feel like Gage has his hot hair tied back most of the time that, like, people wouldn't make comments on it. Mm, okay, see, I noticed Gage's hair when it kept, like, getting in front of his face at, ah, uh, in uh, one moment. So that was what that was motivated by. Not okay. that Gage, I think, needs a haircut. I think his hair is fine. But I yeah, just felt like great. that was something the casuals would, like, be bothered by. 
Right. Mm, they get bothered by a lot of weird niche things. Um, okay, pretty. And we're going to go back to you. Same similar concept. Is it a ice queen needs to leave, please B bye bye burpee. <laughs> what is that the title of the episode? <laughs> bye bye burpee. Uh, C dick weeds. Gotta go. Oh, oh who is that? Sp- spelled D I K. So no C. <laughs> okay, I don't okay. know if that, like like a like a dick dick you know like the little um it's like a what? like a deer thing. I don't think I know that. <laughs> okay, I don't dick know if dick. that's the reference, but anyway. Um, and then comment D. Who is the girl in jury? She has a very bitter <laughs> attitude and face last night. Does she not understand that this is a game and she is not the princess? Sorry, that's I mean, that sounds that like a Facebook. That sounds, um, oh, that's in all caps. The, wow. the, the last part that is not the princess part is in all caps. Okay. Yeah, because the first two are a lot shorter. Mm hmm. Yeah, we have Ice Queen needs to leave. Bye bye, bye, bye. Burpee. Dick weeds gotta go. And who is the girl in jury? <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm gonna say C with the K. Dick weeds gotta go. So Dick weeds is real, and I, I oh. messaged Puya specifically saying, "Can I say this?" <laughs> okay, I was gonna say like that's a bit of a reach, but I also am like. Yeah, I do I wonder if someone called someone else a dickweed on the show. Would it make air or not? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, did they specify again? It was D I K. I don't know if that was like intentional. Uh, no, I wrote Ice Queen needs to leave, please. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was thinking maybe like a Genevieve or a Caroline. Yeah, yeah I would really thought of There's Genevieve. Be women that they hate. Usually they do. That, that you know, right. One would- sense um okay so pretty i do believe you're mathematically eliminated but <laughs> we do have one more round of questions this is my andy era <laughs> exactly proud of you well we're manifesting your win right we all believe it's gonna happen right exactly. at some point in the season so mike let's go back to you this is just sort of general complaining as the casuals are wont to do comment a one challenge in an endless sea of pointless yakking. This season is the worst. Dot, dot, dot. Come on in, guys. Uh, <laughs> it, they went is there. It, is it B? Ooh, wow, you're, you're a real firebrand there. Rebel you without know. a cause. Where's your <laughs> leather jacket, Carol? What a badass. Uh, is it comment B? Looks like they edited out the wokeness of the show finally. <laughs> yep. Yes, that's exactly it. Is you it stumbled s- upon how they fixed the new era? They did it. They nailed it. Come on in, guys. Um, <laughs> is it C? This cast is a bunch of diary of a wimpy kid. What a bunch of wimps. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> or is it D? Paramount Plus wipes. <laughs> wipes what? Wipes. <laughs> Does it though? Like you could say Paramount Plus is that if you pay for more or sucks. There's no direct object involved in that sentence. Does wipes work? Has anyone ever said like, oh man, this really wipes? Above, above no ads, it wipes. It'll wipe. This wipes. I mean, I guess there's implicit, right? But like, okay, this blows. Like, okay, this blows chunks. Like, it's so mm. sort of parenthetical. Like, wipes. this wipes, wipes. my I never ass. Really like, that. I don't, I don't know. Is that is that what's implied at the latter part of the sentence? Paramount Plus wipes. wipes. Unless, unless, are they promoting possible new merch? Paramount Plus wipes. Wipes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they smell like your favorite streaming shows. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't and actually want the Survivor ones, though. Like, yeah, you ugh. don't want to smell like a campfire. Like a survivor. No. no. Paramount no. Plus. I mean, I'm so obsessed with Paramount Plus wipes that. But no offense, Liana. I think this yeah. is a, a piece of because it's fun. It's like it's like finding a like a, a tree that's been struck by lightning, freshly mm. smoldered into the earth. It's like a natural system of beauty that cannot be created by man, <laughs> even amongst his best efforts. Uh, so I'm going to leave Paramount's Plus Wipes be <laughs> as sterile as the wipes that are coming with it. Uh, so we've got the double trouble of A and B, and we've got the diary of a wimpy kid, and they're a bunch of wimps. Oh, I really hope that's real. That sounds like a Big Brother one. They would use that up for mm. Big Brother. Everybody's just going with the house. Yeah, I got a bunch house. of wimps here. 
I, but I feel like this episode, yeah, that's the thing. I guess, like, you could say on the one hand, okay, well, no one really cried this episode. So, like, is there a wimpy behavior? But you bring up a good point, Peridium, that, like, everyone kind of went along with the plan. And so that's mm. behavior befitting of a wimp. I'll say you borrowed diary of a wimp. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, More like diary of a wimpy kid. <laughs> Am diarrhea I right? of wimpy kid. <laughs> Better yeah. use those Paramount Plus wipes to get the diary of a wimpy kid off. Yeah. Oh, so the, no. the Paramount Plus wipes one. So I had another, you know, because I pull a ton of comments and I sort of reorganize them. So for example, I had like a series of comments. There was one person who said, I have to wait until Thursday to watch on Peacock Plus. Like there were a bunch of, of, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I love to watch Survivor as well as the new show, The Summit, this evening on Fi Optics Catch Up TV. Clap emoji, clap emoji. Fi Optics? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I had no idea. So I had Paramount Plus wipes in with those two because I was like, that's weird. But then I, I kept reading Paramount Plus wipes over and over. And as you said, Mike, it was just such an enigma that I couldn't wrap my head around it. I didn't know if it was an insult. I didn't know what they were saying. I was just so fascinated by it. So I had to include it somewhere. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so final question for you, Peridium. Again, we're going to continue with the general complaining. Uh, so your comments are, A, can we stop we the goofy whispering thing at Tribal and make a rule people have to stay seated? It's ruining that part. I feel like we the goofy is like the preamble to the B&B constitution. <laughs> we, we the goofy. <laughs> <laughs> One B&B. <laughs> Under Rob. Yeah, oh, right man. Itself. It writes itself. Injustice and Paramount Plus wipes. <laughs> Paramount Plus wipes for all. Um, okay. Or so A, uh, B is this show has become so dull. No one needs 90 minutes of dinner jabber. Uh, is it C? I think the show has sunk to a new low. Whispering at the vote tacky and uncalled for <laughs> oh the same person like so why are you burping <laughs> oh my <laughs> i can't <laughs> believe you've done this um or is it d why do i even watch this show boston rob must be rolling in his grave trying ah! to watch this season oh, what? oh no <laughs> oh my god what do they think's going? How old is what season are we on? Well, they did build a giant statue of him a little while back. They Maybe did they thought build it was a... some sort of like uh, a mass grave. <laughs> he was on the season, yeah. guys. He's not dead. He's just he's right. He's right there. He's right there, guys. Wow. Right there. Okay. What was the uh, the jibber jabber one? Ah, uh, yes. Said? Uh, you mean dinner jabber? Dinner uh, jabber. No one needs ninety minutes of this dinner jabber. Dinner jabber. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that one. That one was real. Not Darn, okay. Not too much dinner jabber. Um, no, I wrote the uh, Boston Rob's eulogy. Rolling grave. Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought, like that's a little much, but then again, people don't know what they're talking about. So, <laughs> well, I my original inspiration was Boston Rob would be rolling his eyes, and I thought it would be funnier. He's <laughs> rolling, rolling in his, his grave. grave. Unless they have yes. spoilers for the Traitor season three, and they're like, oh, we no. know that Boston Rob is murdered in canon, mm -hmm. and so he's rolling mm -hmm. around. They in his left grave. him in the coffin. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. they like do an Ekin <laughs> Sue and they hold his funeral. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, all right. So oh that's Lord, not Boston <laughs> Rob. <laughs> oh, man. oh no. <laughs> that uh so that's the end of the game we have officially, but I do want to bring up just a few other small comments because we haven't really um talked much about the casual. So one is there's someone who is officially team teeny. They recently adopted a puppy and the shelter named her teeny, and she watches the show with me. She sleeps oh. a lot but stays awake to watch the show. Go teeny. And I thought that was just the the cutest thing in the entire That's wholesome. world i know isn't that adorable That's and great. and then the other one is a joke so i thought this would be funny if you guys could think of the punchline the others were jokes <laughs> they're all it's all a joke <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one is uh, specifically framed to be a joke i believe okay. so here's the joke what challenge would cannibals do on survivor okay something with <laughs> Is it like the name of a challenge or is it like, I don't okay. know. I... I'm not sure. Uh, I, yeah. The like one with the meat? Be like, oh, yes. Hands on a hard idol. <laughs> no, it's not like one of the names. Um, look, I'll, I'll just tell you, it's swallow the leader. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Excuse me? 
I kind of want more of these. And the casuals yeah. come Wait, that was the punchline? That was the... Yeah. What, what are challenge they referencing? Would, what, challenges would, what challenge would cannibals do on oh, Survivor? To follow the leader. Swallow the leader. Well, or it could be... Is that a challenge? So, I, so again, I set this to Puya. He's my eyes and ears before I read these things on stream to know what is appropriate. <laughs> right. I need Get like a, temperature a, check. a standards and practices to like send everything through. And he was like, I just assumed it was a cunnilingus joke. I was going to say, like, I'm pretty sure it's just like... Uh, <laughs> you know take take the load <laughs> yeah i was like no they're cannibals they're eating each other which did make me think of like a survivor uh, oops all cannibals season i think that would go bad how long do you think it would last <laughs> yeah, it was, is it like, still wanna... 26 days i think it's 2.6 days <laughs> yeah did i did they make it the whole way i don't know about that we get a lot of meta medevacs that yeah. <laughs> oh do they medevac or they just kind of let things go the way they do like you know mm. what you signed up for <laughs> Exactly. It's either eat or be eaten, quite literally. <laughs> it's in your that's contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eat or be eaten. That's so good. Finally, uh, themes are back. <laughs> finally, that's all it took. Uh, well, congratulations really to all of us for enduring the casuals, uh, which, yes, uh, they hate everyone except for Saul and a little bit of Kyle is essentially the takeaway from it. Okay. Well, I definitely did not hate this game. Such a great time to check in with the casuals, Liana. Cannot mm -hmm. wait to see what happens after the season, especially because uh, it's a little bit of like, well, Saul's not going to win. So we'll see if they gather behind somebody mm -hmm. by the end of all of this. To finish things off, of course, as always, we cede the spotlight over to our guests to highlight a charity or cause that is important to them. Pridium, of course, you have a usual go-to. Is it going to be your go-to for this week? I mean, Liana almost served it up with the teeny and the adopting a puppy. Oh, and cannibals. <laughs> and the cannibals, not so much. Please don't cannibalize nope. or do nope. anything of that nature nope. if you can help it. Um, if you yeah, can help I'll, I'll, it. if you can help it, <laughs> I, know, look, I understand. If you're in a bind, like I get it, but like if look, you just if try not nature, to, I'm not going to judge too people. much. I want to yum your yuck or yuck your yum, yuck but like, yeah, well, that's why you say. Yum. Hopefully, you're saying that when you're eating someone, either yuck or yum. Yeah. You know, uh, it happens to the best of us or the worst of us. Mostly the worst of us. Um, anyway, yes, I wanted to shout out because I do it all the time. Uh, the SPCA, uh, I volunteered for them. They are all over the country, actually all over the world, but they're not in every state. Uh, so if they're not, that's okay. It's mostly just like adopt, don't shop, you adopt mm -hmm. pets, adopt little teenies of the world if you can, yeah. and, you know, give them a forever home. That's where I did with my kitty. And it's, uh, it's a great little thing. And, you know, I have volunteered my time. I've also donated to them as well. Uh, great, great stuff there. And I'm, I'm sure wherever you are in the country or even the world, if there's something nearby or something adjacent to it, that is about animals and pets and not being cruel and just being conscientious, conscientious and educated about what it is and, you know, don't uh, jump into it without realizing this is another creature you're putting into your life and it's going to live for the next 10, 15 years. So, but yeah, there's a lot going on. So I would say SPCA for sure. Um, that would be my charity that I strongly recommend, partially because I literally have volunteered and, and donated to them myself. So. Well, thank you for volunteering your time as always to come on and talk of with course. us about all this nonsense, your thoughts on the season so far and opening yourself up to the casuals. You are uh, unlike these players, the exact opposite of a wimp, you do not wipe. Well, I'm so odd out of context. I do have a bidet. I have a bidet, so maybe it's true. <laughs> I have a bidet. Well, I can confirm. Well, you guys I are can't attest. <laughs> it's, it's good quality. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Peridium, of course, uh, you are absolutely filling up the internet with your weekly content, and not only Survivor, but all reality TV on your YouTube channel. Anything you want to plug that's either just released or coming up for anybody who... Is that they're subscribed or not yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, every Wednesday on YouTube is Survivor. And honestly, it'll be that way until the next Big Brother season. So we're looking at another, what is it, six months or so of Survivor content. If you're interested and you want to listen to me talk for 15 minutes instead of an hour and a half, 15 minutes, I'll ask every week. Just whatever the topic is, it'll be about Survivor. Um, I've been talking about rogue votes. I talked about how a single vote can make all the difference. Uh, actually, it was interestingly, Saul could have made it into a video I recently made unfortunately he didn't survive the vote but the idea was players who were basically on death's door and managed to escape death and mm. survive so rachel and when I saw, for example rachel would be a great one she'd be a great one um when i saw uh sam go up to uh saul and was like this is gonna be the most important conversation you have and i'm mm. like uh oh this is bad for Saul. <laughs> this might be mm -hmm. the last conversation he has it reminded me heavily of like eddie and andrea from Caramoan, except mm. andrea survived the vote i was hoping Saul would have the same fate unfortunately he did not survive 
But um, so I make videos every week about Survivor, and uh, it's it's just it's what I do. I have a good time. I've been doing it for seven years, and we'll see how long it goes. So that's what's yeah. Up. I would call it essential watching for future mm -hmm. castaways. Hell, I mean, uh, Andy himself name drops Peridium in my interview with him. That oh, he nice. watched the your challenge hack videos, all of the <laughs> compilations that you do. So I would say personally, not mm -hmm. to put words in his mouth, if Andy does win a challenge, boom! I think, I think you take some credit for it. Yes! Absolutely. I have another challenge hack video coming up. Perfect. Why not? And we'll see what we'll see what goes on. And if Andy decides to do something when it's a challenge, it's definitely going to be hacked because Andy surprisingly won a challenge. So there's got to be something to talk about there. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Well, as we lie eagerly and wait for that inevitability to happen, Liana, of course, you are keeping your Wednesday nights busy, not mm -hmm. only covering Survivor, but also the Mass Singer new group introduced. Yes. We love it. It's like a little new, a little premiere all over again. So that's always really you know, fun. More than halfway through a season. Yeah. Uh, we essentially, the Mass Singer has like three premieres the way it works because you get these, these new groups. So it's like always exciting. So you can hear Puya and I talk about that and you can follow me on Blue Sky at, uh, what am I? Lianaism.bluesky.social or whatever it is, but you, you find me, just search my name. Yeah, you can follow me on Blue. Uh, pretty are you on Blue Sky as well? I did join Blue Sky. Tw uh, tw uh, not even tweet, I post. I don't know what you call it. it. You is it skeeting? Well, when you swallow the load, there's certainly a skeet involved. <laughs> a lot of ske skeets going on here. Yeah, I did. I, I put out two skeets Yay. so far. One was just a dot, just for fun. Oh, okay. See if it was working. And the other one I advertised in the video. I am advertising on, I've got like a couple hundred people following at this point. I'm like, good for them, you know? I hope well, let's get happy. to a couple thousand <laughs> by this podcast end. You've got it, people. Go to it. Yeah. Check us all out, all out there. Mm -hmm. I know that a, a few of us, myself, Dalton Ross, Josh, like exclusively skeeted on Wednesday. Uh, and it was fun. It's fun to build a community over there in New Space. Blue Sky is so much. It feels like Twitter before Twitter became such a garbage dump. Yes. Kind of. Yes. Which is like great. It basically looks and there have been times where I had, had Blue Sky open on my phone and I'm like, didn't realize I thought it was on Twitter for a second or vice versa because they look exactly the same, except there's like way less ads, way less of the whole. Oh, man, it's just, you know, where it's just that direction. It's just awful. So Blue Sky's good so far. Yeah, so you can check all us, all of us out on there. You can check out uh, my interview with Saul, which was a really great time. Love talking with Saul. And also, if you want Saul's response to, as we've talked about throughout, a lot of overwhelming positivity towards him from the fandom. He has a lot of gratitude towards the fans from all social media sites uh, for a lot of support that the soldiers were showing out, even if he didn't have the troops amassed on the island. And then all the other stuff that I'm doing, I'll shout out that uh, Silo Season 2 just premiered on Apple TV+, Plus, which was a, a, a very fun sci-fi show that I'm recapping with Grace Leader. Had Owen Knight on TV for real, which was a great time. Told some, some harrowing stories about the fact that two-thirds of the panel nearly ran over award-winning quarterbacks with their cars at points in their lives. We get into a lot of weird shit, and that's coming from someone who hosts the BNB. So check <laughs> it all out. Follow me at a Mike Bloom type. Next week, what is this? A crossover episode? Yes. Yes, it is. Because uh, we haven't done this in a while, but Shannon Gus is going to hop across international waters and join Liana and I to talk about episode 10. We're reaching double digits. It's the actual final nine vote. Hopefully mm -hmm. no votes are lost. I'm intrigued to see where we go from here. I think everyone kind of hiding behind the Saul vote made things pretty easy, despite all the difficulties of the whispering. So this could get cracked wide open. I'm sure we'll give Chizzy points. I'm sure we'll have a lot of malarkey along the way. So make sure you don't miss a second of it. Make sure you send us game ideas as well. RHAPBNB at gmail.com or hashtag RHAPBNB on social media. Special thanks to everyone behind the scenes at RHAP for packaging this podcast for your eyes and ears and Will from America for his fantastic theme song, which you can hear on the podcast version of this. And to all of you on YouTube as well that uh, came over from Peridium's fandom into ours. We're grateful to have you here and hopefully sticking around as next week we'll be joined by Shannon Gus to discuss episode 10. Until next time, everybody, check you out at your next day.